Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and competition is a good thing. Just yesterday, I went through a series of rumours to tell us that Skylake X, as well as KB Lake X on the X299 platform, were going to be pushed forward in release date, not backwards for once, and we're going to be seeing them possibly debuting at Computex. Well, another source has stepped in, this time over at Benchlife.info. And to say a source is an understatement because they've gone ahead and linked a whole bunch of information on the new processors and it actually shows off Intel's first 12 core processor for the desktop. The platform will be debuting on the 30th of May during Intel's keynote but will be available end of June. So let's go through a few of the details. First of all, once again, while this is not Intel's first 12 core processor or anything like that, it is the first time that they've released it for the HETT market. In other words, it's the first time we're going to be seeing it for the prosumer, I suppose is the best way of putting it. There's going to be five SKUs available. So the five different CPUs are going to be 12, 10, 8, and 6. Those are going to be based on the Skylake X platform, with the four core being based on the Kaby Lake platform. There are a couple of discrepancies between the number between the processors, not just the number of cores. So first of all, Skylake X is going to have a TDP of 140 versus 112 for KB. Plus, there's going to be a few other discrepancies with both PCIe lanes and memory. So memory for the Skylake is going to be quad channel DDR4, not surprising, up to 2,667 megahertz, whereas 2,400 megahertz is going to be the memory for the memory sh uh, speed of the memory should you decide to run in 2D PC mode. Lake X, however, is only going to support RAM up to dual channel configurations, which is fair enough given the platform's chip. The other difference is going to be on the PCIe lanes. <clears throat> so Skylake X is going to have 44, I'm just going to repeat that one more time, 44 PCIe 3.0 lanes, so 68 total, whereas Lake X is going to have just 16 PCIe 3.0 lanes with 40 lanes total. In other words, there was going to be a large discrepancy between the sheer number of upgradability options if you're going for multi multiple graphics co um, configurations, if you perhaps want to go high in storage, that type of thing. Obviously, the Skylake X platform is going to be much better suited for that type of environment. But wait, there is a little bit more. Supposedly, we're going to be seeing a coffee link and the Z. 370 platform releasing August. Now that's quite interesting because along with that there's going to be H370 and B360 and H310 chip sets and those are going to be taking um, place on your store shelves between end of 2017 possibly early 2018. So what does that mean? Well it looks like Intel are also planning to cut prices. There are a few stores which are already starting to have price cuts but just no official price cuts. This makes things in the desktop market rather tricky. Because if you are planning to buy, let's say, an 8-core Ryzen, well, I'm going to go on record and say that it's still going to be cheaper than, let's say, a high-end um, CPU from Intel. But on the other hand, if you're looking to buy like a very high-end processor and you don't really care about the cost, then things are a little bit weird. In fact, I would say that weird is a very good way of describing the PC market as a whole. But not bad weird, not weird as in like, we don't have any good choices. Actually, it's the reverse. This is one of those times where I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I believe that you can't really make a poor decision over the next several months. Sure, retrospectively, you might be able to get a piece of hardware a bit cheaper, or maybe you could have waited to get a hardware that's a bit faster, but there's no actual shit decision right now which is good in other words let's <clears throat> let's go ahead and discuss a couple of potential options you go out right now and you buy a ryzen 7 1700 that's an eight core processor it's not very expensive and really the implications of the 16 thread i'm sorry 16 core ryzen doesn't make any difference to you because well it's a lot more expensive the same thing could be said for the x299 platform way more expensive doesn't really affect you at all. On the other hand, you could go and say, well, what about the 12 core Skylake X? The problem with that is that you could go out and buy that, and then you've got the Ryzen 
nines or whatever the hell they're going to be called the 16 core 32 thread cpus which are supposedly going to be launching on the x399 platform from amd either way you're in a pretty good spot there same thing in the graphics arena like there's no actual bad decision in gpus right now i'm going to go ahead ahead and say right now that you could buy a 580 or even an end of the line 480 and that GPU is really fast. On the other hand, you could buy like a GTX 1060 or perhaps even a 1080, perhaps even splurge a little bit more cash out and buy the ones with the faster memory, respective to the platform, of course. And you're going to be happy for some time. Like a 1060 is bloody fast. Despite all the talk of Vega, despite the fact that we might actually be getting Volta at the end of this year. You know, that's a bit of a rumor, isn't it? There's no actual bad time to buy in the graphics card market right now because let's say you were to go out and buy a GTX 1080. First of all, the prices are falling quite a bit, especially with the vanilla memory. Second of all, the cards are just bloody fast. I don't care if you're running, you know, a 1440p monitor or a 1080p monitor. 4K is a bit of a different story. Those cards are more than fast enough for some time. And with DirectX 12, Vulkan becoming more prevalent in the marketplace, Basically, what I'm telling you is that we're pretty good right now for options, for decisions, if you're buying an SSD. Well, goodness gracious, you've got a lot of SSD options. Memory is becoming a lot faster and a lot more affordable in terms of large, larger configurations. Yes, the price is going up a little bit, especially for the cutting-edge processes, as Amy discussed a few days ago. But just generally speaking, it's a really good time in the PC market. And one of the reasons behind that is quite simple, competition. Personally, I'm actually really happy that Intel are releasing this processor, and I'm actually really curious to see what happens with the 16-core Ryzen CPU. Now, ultimately, am I advocating, am I recommending, am I suggesting? Yes, I know there's a multiple different phrases which mean essentially the same thing. A 12-core processor, if your end goal is to play some Quake. Hell no, it's not. Ultimately, I would suggest you buy like a 7700K, Ryzen 7 1700, perhaps a Ryzen 5, whatever. But I would not say a processor this expensive is good for you if you're only really interested in gaming. But if you're not just interested in gaming, perhaps you're doing a lot of Photoshop work, perhaps you're doing a lot of free, 3D rendering, perhaps you decide you want to do a lot of virtual machine work, perhaps you decide you want to do some video encoding at the same time as doing some gaming, maybe you're doing a lot of streaming, Maybe you are doing a lot of multiple things at once. Perhaps you're, you know, running a lot of client desktops, whatever the case may be. Well, in which case, you know, you could certainly make a very compelling argument. Let's say a 10 core uh, processor on the base and falls platform with, let's say, 16 or even better, 32 gigabytes of memory and a decent GPU. You could, by all means, quite happily run a game. That's for the sake of this video, say it's Doom or whatever and also be quite happy to run instances of virtual machine, doing some compiling in the background, whatever you want to do, with not really that much difficulty, especially when you start factoring in multiple, uh, sorry, the number of lanes available in terms of communication. So you won't really be thrashing your um, SSD too much if you have like a couple of them in, you know, in your machine. So for example, you know, you could have a Steam install on a 750 gigabyte SSD on one system, on one um, on one particular port, and then you could have perhaps another um, M2 SSD, which perhaps would be running virtual machine instances. You'd be very good, in other words. So it's a pretty good time to get into PC gaming, especially given the barrier to entry, in other words, the, the actual cost now to get into a pretty nice setup is getting a lot lower. So yes, you do have the cutting edge CPUs such as these, and I'm very happy Coffee Lake is going to be launching a lot earlier as well, which once again is going to be possibly August, because if we can start seeing mainstream processors from Intel on mainstream platforms becoming higher in number of processor cores, I've said for some time, I love um, the Skylake architecture, I love like the Kaby Lake architecture, although essentially it's the same, just higher clocks. But the fact that they are still own only on four cores, eight threads, is just crap. It's like, I'm not saying the process is bad. I'm just saying that in many usage scenarios, Intel are just behind. Because if you are doing streaming, if you are doing X, Y, and Z, I'm not saying Intel can't compete or can't do it. But I'm just saying, you know, it's very difficult for me to 
to suggest to someone if they've got a highly overclocked like Devil's Canyon, just for example, or they have, let's say, um, a 6700K, it's basically pointless to upgrade to, well, KB Lake. It's just pretty much pointless. So something like this is going to do a couple of things. One, it's going to compete against, well, you know, AMD. And second, it's actually going to mean Intel are competing against itself. At the moment, they're not really doing that. Um, for the average person, if you're on a finite budget, which, let's face it, most people are, if, for example, your friend Bill was to offer you a 4770K for free, and, let's say, decent DDR3 memory, or you could rush out and buy, you know, a, six, uh, sorry, a 7700K, just for example, let's just take... Uh, AMD out of the equation, focus squarely on Intel, you would obviously, in a perfect world, go with the 7700K. On the other hand, if you've only got a certain amount of money, I would much rather you go out, you know, buy, let's say, a GTX 1070 along with the other components for the build, and keep the uh, keep the 4770K, maybe get a decent cooler on it, do a little bit of overclocking, and squeeze the maximum performance out of it. I mean, after all, you can get like 4.2 to 4.5, maybe 4.6 if you're really lucky with the Silicon Lottery. On the other hand, if Intel were to start releasing a high number of cores in the mainstream, that's no longer the case. You know, you can start saying, well, okay... Now I've got a reason to upgrade. I'm getting, you know, a couple of extra cores, a couple, you know, four extra threads. I've got higher clocks. I've got the benefits of a better platform, which is one of the reasons, of course, to upgrade as well. You do get the the platform bonuses, you know, additional PCIe lanes and you know SATA ports and USB 3.1 and blah blah blah. But to some people, that just does not matter if they're only really doing gaming or perhaps you know doing other tasks as well, like a lot of Photoshop work. If someone's doing a lot of Photoshop work then maybe USB 3.1 could be kind of handy for external storage devices, possibly. But if, once again, they've only got a finite amount of money, well, you know what it's like. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.